Today we will perform a transient thermal analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. This will be a linear transient heat transfer analysis in which time dependent temperature loads will be applied on the geometry. We will observe the rise in temperature of an exhaust manifold when high temperature exhaust gases are passed through it for a period of 200 seconds. The grid temperature results will be visualized during post processing. Let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the transient thermal analysis setup. The first step is to define a thermal material and property for the component. Let's take a look at how this is done. Once the geometry is imported in Hypermesh, one component is visible in the model browser. Let's start by creating a new material and provide a name to it. To define a thermal material in Optistruct, the MAT4 card image is used. K is thermal conductivity in Watt per millimeter degree Celsius. Cp is specific heat of the material with unit per degree Celsius. Rho is the density in ton per millimeter cube. H is free convection heat transfer coefficient in Watt per millimeter square degree Celsius. Now create a new property. As we are using solid geometry, change the card image to P solid. Select the cast iron material in material selection box. Let's assign this property to the exhaust manifold component. The material gets assigned automatically. Now we can start with the meshing process. Open the tetramesh tab from 3D panel. Switch the radio button to volume tetra. Select the solid in entity selector. We will set 2D type to R triads. With element size as 4, select elements to solid component option. Create the mesh. Let's switch to shaded elements view. Now open the nodes tab from geometry panel. With the arc center option selected, switch drop down to lines. Select these edges and create a center node. Now we can start setting up the time dependent temperature loading on the geometry. This process may seem difficult. If you face any difficulties, feel free to mention it below in the comments and I will try to address all the issues as soon as possible. Let's start by creating SPC and SPCD entries for the temperature load. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Duplicate this load collector for temperature SPCD. Create another duplicate for ambient SPC. Create one more load collector for ambient SPCD. Lastly, create a load collector to combine these SPC entries. Let's change the color of these load collectors for better visualization. Set SPC temp as the current load collector. Open the constraints tab from analysis panel. Now switch the entity selector to faces. Select this face. We will deselect all degrees of freedom. With load type as SPC, Click on create edit. Now enter D that is temperature value as 0. Exit the constraints tab. Now set SPCD temp as the current load collector. Open the constraints tab and select the same face. 
Change the load type to SPCD and click on create edit. Now enter the D that is multiplier value as 1. Set SPC ambient as the current load collector. We will use the temporary node as ambient temperature node. Open constraints tab and switch entity selector to nodes. Now select the ambient node. With load type as SPC, click on create edit. Keep the D value as 0. Now set the SPCD ambient as current load collector. In the constraints tab, select the ambient node. Change load type to SPCD and click on create edit. Enter the multiplier D value as 1. Exit the constraints panel. Select the SPC add load collector and change its card image to SPC add. In the tabular data entry, select the SPC temp load collector. Enter num value as 2. Open the table again and select SPC ambient load collector in second row. Now we will create load curves for ambient as well as temperature loads. This will specify time dependent temperature variation. Create a new curve. The curve editor opens which will be used to define this curve. Provide a name to the curve. Let's enter a time dependent temperature load with time on x axis and temperature value in degree celsius on y axis. Now create a second curve and provide a name to it. This curve will be used to specify the change in ambient temperature during given time interval. As hot gases flow through the pipe, this temperature will rise to as high as 600 degrees Celsius. Once the curves are created, close the curve editor. Select the curves in model browser and change the card image to table D1. Now create a new load collector to link the temperature load curve with temperature SPCD. Switch the card image to T load 1. Let's duplicate the T load 1 entry for ambient temperature. In the temperature T load, select the temperature SPCD in excited field. Set the type to displacement and select the temperature load curve in proper selection box. For the ambient T load, select SPCD in excited field. With load type as displacement, select the ambient curve in selection box. Now to combine these two T load entries, create a new load collector. Set the card image of this load collector to D load. Let's use scale factor S at value 1. Now enter 2 in the num field and open the tabular data entry. Select the two T load entries in table selection boxes. For both entries, enter multiplying factor as 1. To define reference temperature, create a new load collector. Change the card image to temp D. Make sure that T1 field is set to 0, which will set 0 degrees as the reference temperature. To specify transient analysis time step, create another load collector. We will set the card image of this load collector to T step. 
let's specify a thousand increments of 0.2 second time interval. This accounts to a total run time of 200 seconds. Now we need to define the convection interface on the inner wall of the manifold. Create a new group. Change the card image to convection. Click on the entity selection box to open the extended selector. Now switch to add solid faces. Select the inner face of the exhaust manifold. Make sure that all the internal faces are selected. Add the faces to this group and return. Now to manually specify the convective heat transfer coefficient for this interface, change F type to 3. Enter value of convective coefficient in H1 field. We will use the card edit panel to link this convection interface with the ambient temperature. Change entity type to elements. Select configuration as slave 3 which will set the element type to CHBDYE. Now we will use the by group selection criteria to select all CHBDYE elements from the convection group. Edit the card. In the TA1 field, we will select the ambient temperature node. The convection interface definition is now complete. To couple all the loads and constraints into a transient thermal analysis, create a load step. Change the analysis type to heat transfer transient. In SPC field, select the SPC add load collector. Select the D load in the respective selection box. Temp D will be the initial condition for this analysis. Lastly, assign the T step load collector to specify time stepping details. To skip element quality check during the solver run, we will add control cards to the analysis. Press Ctrl F and search for the param card. Add it to the setup. Check the box next to check L and set it to no. The transient thermal analysis setup is now complete. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the analysis run. Open the Optistruct tab from Analysis panel. Set Export Options to All and Run Options to Analysis. Click on Optistruct to launch the solver. This will take some time to solve. Once the analysis is complete, we can view the results using Hyperview. Open the Contour tab and apply the grid temperature results. Set Transient Animation Mode. The animation speed can be adjusted using the bottom slider. Play the animation. As there are 1000 frames, this may take some time to load. We can see the time varying change in temperature values on the surface of the exhaust manifold. We have successfully performed a transient thermal analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. And this is how we can perform a transient thermal analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up. It helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.